I'm James Just, and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Tanya Collins, a child rights activist, and Jason Quintero, the chairman of Solano County. So for Halloween, let's start with something scary. Are social media companies manipulating our elections? A couple weeks ago, Facebook announced that they are going to reduce the the feeds that your friends get. If your friends post too much, they're going to reduce how much you see that. So is that manipulating elections, Jason? I think it's a private company, and I think we understand the leanings of Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. Of course they're manipulating the elections. Well, they're, they're manipulating the media, and we as private citizens have the right and the choice to decide to follow it, eat it up, or not. What can you say? Yes. Yes. Censorism, or, um, censorship is uh, extremely poor uh, for uh, Facebook because they're always, you know, they've always got an agenda. And so you kind of are, you know, well, you see something, but then it'll, it'll be gone the next day. Or, mm -hmm. you know, they're always manipulating something. So I wouldn't put, put it past them, you know, to try to manipulate everybody's brain into thinking that, nope, sorry, you can't vote for that person or, you know. <laughs> And it's good that we're aware of it, though. I think everybody is aware of it, right? We all understand right. that's what's happening. So take it for what it's worth, you know? Yeah, well, you know, the question is, when we're going out, they're talking about um, they want to restrict the you know, manipulations from Russian manipulation or foreign company or foreign election manipulations. But what if there's people in the United States who want to hear what Russia wants us to think? And, <laughs> and, if, the, and if Facebook and, or is responding to political pressure to to manipulate or to restrict what we are, have access to. Is that artificially manipulating elections in favor of our political establishment rather than the freedom that we all want? Right. When I hear about Russia, Russia manipulation, it's kind of funny because CNN manipulates us. MSNBC manipulates us. Yeah. Those who watch Fox are being manipulated. Maybe manipulation is a harsh word, but that's the slap that you're taking in. So uh, to say manipulation is kind of funny. It's just advertising, it's just marketing to you. And again, you want to listen to that? That's up to you, man. It's right. up to you. Right, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can go back to what Rudolph first, give me a picture, I'll give you a war. This manipulation of the public and the public discourse is nothing new. Right. I guess the, the question is, they offered themselves up as a free and platform as a free platform where everybody can freely express themselves and they are now restricting that ability. And so it's, is it a dishonest marketing? It's when they started, they accepted that we're going to free a platform and now they're acting more as a uh, publisher rather than a platform. Mm -hmm. it's so, you know, if they're a publisher, fine, that publishers are allowed to speak them to freely, you know, have their, their say. But if they are a platform, let's say if you're, we're putting up a community bulletin board, you know, and everybody can post there, but we're going to take down you know, people who want to dog, some dog sitters, but not others, is, <laughs> you know, it becomes, there becomes a, it's a very difficult issue because as libertarians, we want everybody has to be free. They're a, they're a, a right. they're a public company. They're a private company. They can do what they want, but they're not really a private company. No. Well, and then they have advertisers come in and then you need to make for sure that you can't advertise anything else other than you know what <clears throat> what you're getting paid to advertise for and then you know it steers it steers clear of you can't you know they can't say certain things or talk about certain subjects or anything because it's you know the the advertisers will not let you they're paying the bills you know these advertisers are, are paying the bills mm -hmm. so yeah the advertiser issue is big on youtube uh, if, if we go past beyond facebook and beyond to the social media is it? It's a big. It's big on YouTube. Anybody who has YouTube channels knows that shadow bans and 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 you know weird things with advertisers is is strange. Now, is that manipulating the elections? Is when you shadow ban a certain person because of political speech? If you're banning political speech, even just shadow banning political speech is that manipulating elections? I agree. It's absolutely manipulation. Absolutely. And I guess the, the key is, you know, do you admit your, your biases? Like, <laughs> like a newspaper, generally admit your biases, or they're clear if they don't admit them. Or are you pretending you're, you're this open platform when you're really not? I think maybe that's the... Issue. Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I hope that people are smart enough to understand they're being manipulated. Right. Pay attention. 
pay attention to what's happening. Um, of course I'm manipulating you. Of course uh, Facebook has its leanings. Google has its leanings. Uh, YouTube, Google has its leaning. At least understand that. But when I want to watch a, uh, a van life video on uh, YouTube, fine, whatever, I don't care. I'm not getting politics out of it, you know. But if I want to get news about Donald Trump on YouTube, yeah, gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We always have to be careful about what we're, what we are absorbing as, as consumers. Right? right. So we have to. We also have to trust. If you look across the country, you know, across the world, France and the Yellow Vest protests and the anti-establishment in Great in Great Britain and the you could even argue Trump is a vote against the anti-establishment. So, you know, yeah. we maybe there are more. The public is more observant than we kind of give them credit for. Mm -hmm. um, well, speaking of observance and we're mail systems, a few weeks ago, a county clerk in, I forget what state she was in, Illinois, I think, but don't quote me on that, was arrested for m manipulating the vote by mail ballot. She was marking people's ballots as invalid. Wow. And she has now been sentenced to, to jail for that. But, you know, our vote by mail system secure. No, mm -mm. because if there is an individual holding a piece of paper, your ballot, and they don't like who you voted for, well, it's obviously they can manipulate that. I, I like to trust the best in humanity. <laughs> I, I really want to. I don't think you can these days. Right. It's hard. I mean, I like to believe in that fairy tale. I want to live right. by my unicorn and, you know, <laughs> live in that fairyland. But, yeah, sure, if you're going to have a hardcore Republican and the Democrat, you know, ballot comes through what might they do right and you don't have to know you can just well this is this particular street has a high number of republicans or a high number of democrats on it and we're just gonna you know oops yeah they're gone. Oops. these these ballots <laughs> right. are invalid they may have invalidated Left some democrat ballots car. or some yeah of their, yeah <laughs> and that's happened right they found right. thousands of ballots yes. in cars just and in the car, yeah. storerooms stuff like that uh, yeah so it happens and, yeah. and we just hope that there's um checks and balances you know, let's make sure there's two people in the room doing this stuff, or I don't know how you can do it. Well, I, is the meat can I like the old way where you go in, you stick your ballot in the machine, it counts it right there, it tells you it counted it, and then you get to walk off. You know, you vote. But, I mean, and that's, there's, that's not always fail-safe, you know, so like... Well, yeah, but it's it's more fail-safe than when you have a single point of per, a person who can sing, who can just sit there and decide, I'm going to disallow these ballots. Yeah, and the mail, definitely. And especially when you have someone like me where they check signatures, and my signature is never the same twice, you know, I can't trust that my ballots are going to be counted. Right. And so I, don't, I personally don't like this whole notion of the vote by mail systems. I get it if you're not there or if you have trouble getting to, to uh, the, a voting place, if you're you know, on vacation or you're disabled or, or you work nights and you just don't want to. I can get that. But for the most part, most of us can get to the ballot box. We vote over a course of a week nowadays or whatever it is. So there's no reason why you shouldn't, you know, put a little effort into voting, make it worth something. That's a great point. Make a little effort. Try. You're voting your, for your leaders, the people making the laws, the people who control you. So put a little effort into it. Makes sense to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. A little on the lazy side, but, you know, I do my best to make an effort. <laughs> well, about making effort. There was a 12-year-old foster child suspended for hugging his gym teacher. I'm so Tanya, this is one in your in your kind of wheelhouse. Yeah. Is what do you think about that? Well, okay, so my my daughter's very very affectionate. She as soon as she is found her teacher, she gave her a hug this year. You know, her second grade teacher. She just ran up, "Hi, I'm Sierra," and gives her a big hug. And so I feel that just kids just want to hug and and love. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't feel that there's anything wrong by that. I don't know why, you know, all of a sudden in society we're like, oh my gosh, he gave a hug. Where, I mean, where, where did that come from? Um, don't get me wrong, there are kids that are, are a little, you know, too much, but you just, as a teacher, just, hey bud, we don't do that here, you know? Um, but, you know, to be, you know, suspended, that's, are they just looking for a way? I think that they were just probably looking for a way to get rid of this kid. And I don't mean that like in a bad way. I'm just saying making any excuse to try to have this kid kicked out, my personal opinion. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's awful. I, I wish I knew more backstory on it because I, I always know there's two sides of the story. 
But this is a 12-year-old who gave a hug to a teacher. This teacher's an adult. And what happened, what's wrong with the teacher? Did the teacher get offended? Was that her Me Too moment? I mean, I, what's going on? And, and the adults, the adults in the room, they decide to dis- suspend a child? Where's the adults here? You know what I mean? Where, are there hard rules that adults just can't bend? And if there are, who made the rules? Come on, people, be adults. Be adults. Yeah. Well, aren't we sending our young men mixed messages? We One, we tell them they're not affectionate enough, they don't express their feelings enough, and here's a 12-year-old teacher who was, he had caused some kind of problems in, in the class, and he'd gone to his teacher to essentially to apologize, please don't make me sit out of the, he wanted to play, and she said, no, go sit out. He had done some kind of minor infraction, mm-hmm. so she, so he went and said, please don't make me sit out. You know, he went and sat out for a few minutes and went back playing, and nothing happened until later on in the day. And so the, the question is, but are we sending these, these young men wrong messages? Here he was, he expressed his affection towards his teacher, the person who, as a foster child, his teachers are essentially his extended family. He doesn't have a family. Right. And so his teachers are his family. And so he's reaching out to a teacher, and she essentially punished him for it. Yeah, Rather than saying, okay, look, this is inappropriate, you know, without, again, without knowing the complete right, backstory. Right, just talk to him about it, you know? Like, uh, where, where has talking gone from, you know, talking to suspending? Like, I, do you not talk to these kids? I just, I don't get it. Well, we live in a punishment-based society now. Everything is, we'll punish you whether it's for wanting to use plastic straws or plastic bags or <laughs> hug your teacher or you know everything everything we do is being punished to get us to behave some way that is kind of we don't even know which way they want us to behave it's not right. clear right there's a real lack of communication and I see in adults also where I have put on Facebook and say hey if you have a problem with me come talk to me right. I'm easy to talk to you I wanted to solve conflicts with somebody online and it's like, dude, really? You got my phone number. Give me a call. Right. And we can work it out. Let's go have lunch. I bet we'll be the best of friends 10 minutes in. Have a conversation. Now we got teachers suspending children. And, and there couldn't be a conversation? Come on, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, and it, I, I, read, I actually read the backstory on this. And it, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of reasoning to it. Now, they did change from a 10-day suspension to a 4-day suspension. But it was, seemed like, well... Still. We still have to justify that we there's something, and it doesn't make any sense. Is he a troubled kid? I don't know the background. Well, he's a foster kid, and so any time you have a foster kid, they're going to have times right. when they yeah. act up. Yes. And so us as adults and people who are in position of authority need to understand that, that you know this foster child needs extra care. Right. And right. as a society, we need extra to give these foster children and, yep. some extra care I because agree. you know the, the family safety net is the best safety net we have, and these foster kids don't have that. Right. And so us as teachers and community members, and uh, we are the ones who have to step up for these particular, this is the most vulnerable group of kids. And so these are the ones we have to pay extra special attention to. And Agreed. we've failed them in every way oh, completely. possible. Yeah. So speaking about failing in every way possible, um, Ukraine leak marijuana corruption has popped up here in Sacramento. Some, uh, a couple of uh, Trump related <laughs> Ukrainian it's a whole it's a whole complicated mess this is a whole complicated mess because you've got a couple Trump Trump people who sees he's got to work with Rudy Giuliani on a, this Ukrainian investigation has turned out they've been giving money to Sacramento Democrat politicians to mm-hmm. to manipulate the marijuana industry here so the one owner can have like half the marijuana dispensaries when they're not supposed to it's it's a very complicated convoluted mess uh, of, of, of <laughs> corruption that somehow ended up with Donald Trump being involved in Sacramento marijuana politics. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's involved in everything. Everything is his fault or his doing of some sort, right? Oh, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm glad you explained it because I'm, I'm reading the headline again. I'm going, Ukraine link mar- Are you kidding? Is this a joke? <laughs> is this the Babylon Bee? This can't be real, right? <laughs> this can't be serious. No, it's really the Sacramento Bee, and it's really that convoluted. It's actually more convoluted than that. I tried to follow the story, and you have to follow like three different stories. But uh, in, a, in a sense, there's these there's this mar- there's this marijuana businessman who's been handing out cash to local politicians for to get favorable business deals on it because it's almost impossible to get a marijuana license here in in Sacramento, and so they've been paying off these all the politicians and essentially what the politicians have done is they said well we'll give the money back you know you know which is hilarious <laughs> since i was caught yeah right right right, right. right. 
And right. you know, from a libertarian perspective, Oops. what money? We get the money. It's gone 48 hours <laughs> later, right? And so it's nice right. to be able to give the 60 grand back or whatever it was. And, you know, we don't have that kind of cash. So, it's, you know, it's this whole thing kind of, a, it's, it's exposed like the whole scam of the, these political contributions. Right. Well, I wouldn't give it back because I wouldn't have it anymore. So I think you understand that. It'll just be gone. <laughs> go my home mortgage or something. Right. I guess I could take my house. I'd go on vacation. Right. I'd be in Hawaii. <laughs> Come get me, I guess. You know, you got to pay for my flight back. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's just, it just seems like such a ridiculous story. And then when you have uh, Ukraine, marijuana, and then you want to throw Trump in there, it's like you're hitting all the right buzzwords. Yeah. You know? And this is your story, Sack B. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think of Babylon B, but whatever. Yeah. Well, the real underlying story is how convoluted the the regulations are, which is what actually feeds this corruption, right? It's the convoluted regulations. I'm sure he'll pay for those to be swept under the rug. Well, that's essentially what he did. And here in Sacramento, you're not allowed to own like more than two marijuana shops, and he like owns half of them. Wow. And he paid off the right people. So, but the question is, we always blame the people who give the the. Uh, bribes, but we don't seem to punish the people who take the bribes very much. Right. They keep getting reelected, even in the, yep. the recent um, stories about this house, the housing, the education scandals, right? <laughs> right. We, we're watching parents go to jail for, for you wanting their kids to have a better education, but how come none of the administrators who took the money are going to jail? Great question. Great question. I mean, you need there needs two. There's two sides of a of a corrupt transaction, right? Both people are corrupt, and the fact that we don't seem to ever punish the side, the politician side, or right. the or the government side of the corruption. They're untouchable. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of untouchable um, amusement things, absurd <laughs> government behavior. The there's a comedy trailer, and I forget what city. I am blanking on the city, but. The, they bailed out. They put decided to want to increase ridership by putting a comedian in their trolleys. Sounds fun. Mm. Sounds great. I love it. And so, well, now they are seven hundred thousand dollars in debt that they're going to have to go get from taxpayers to pay for the for the over underfunding of this trolley. It's just absurd government behavior, yeah. Tanya. Yeah, yeah. it's. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even have words for it, really. <laughs> it's uh, um, abuse of power, abuse of, you know. Um, and then, of course, the taxpayers are always the ones that are like, oh, sorry, you got to help us out now, you know. Mm -hmm. It's on you. It's on you. Right. So. so let me get this straight. The government, the city government, whatever government, hired an, a comedian to be on trolleys. Is that right? Yes. To ride trolleys to, to give entertainment to people on the okay. trolley. I thought it was uh, an entrepreneur getting on a trolley doing his own individual thing. I thought that's what it was, but no, you're saying the government hired a the government hired, well, contracted with a with uh -huh. a yes contracted <laughs> with it, and, and there's seven hundred thousand dollars dead. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Again, it's where are the adults in the room? Right. Where are the I'm, voters? I want to know where the voters right, are. Right, where are the voters? This is, it continues to happen over and over again. Yes. Where are our voters? Well, I'm sure that most of them don't even realize that this is happening. You know, True. they just like, you know, it just True. goes way over their head. They don't care. You know, they're like, oh, well, they're Democrats, so they're just going to stay in there. Let's keep voting for them. Yeah, because I let's like just the keep guy. voting for them. Right. It's too bad. I mean, I don't know what to say. I wish I knew what city this was. I should have. I, my research. Sorry about that. No, and I, I I'm definitely gonna look. This I blanked up on it. I I, I read <laughs> yeah. too much. I want to know. <laughs> I, this. Well, in a in a city we do know, San Francisco, with all the housing problems here in San Francisco, we've they've have corporate owned condos now that sit empty for most for most of the year, and so when when corporations need to bring in outside executives mm -hmm. or something, they have a place to come and stay for the three months, and then it sits empty for nine months. And apparently there's thousands of, of essentially condo units that sit mostly empty for the year. And San Francisco is thinking about banning this practice. Even though this practice is a result of, you know, the decades of rent control laws. Right. You can't ban the practice. I mean, these corporations, whether you like it or not, they paid the money. They own it. And their executives are going to hang out there. I mean, I wish I was there, but... I'm not that guy, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I don't know, it's hard to think you're going to go ban somebody to do what they want with their place, with their home. Their business, Their yeah. business. It's a business. 
Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a business. Right. It's their property. Right. And I, I, I get, you know, there's home, the homeless, obviously. It's com- completely out of control yeah. um, in San Francisco. And I, so I get what they're trying to or try, you know, trying to accomplish, but they really never really accomplish that, you know. So, um, you know, they need to come up with some other brilliant ideas. <laughs> well, well, I've just said, Tanya, about they're trying to accomplish something. But that's something they're trying to accomplish. I guarantee it's not going to work. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you know, they're not, you know, right. obviously everything that they've tried to accomplish hasn't worked. Right. San Francisco has been trying to solve their homeless crisis uh-huh. for decades. Right. They can't do it. Mm-mm. They're trying to do it through um, just... Giving to, needles. G- giving needles or, or taking the rich guy's property. I know what I'll do. I'll take the rich guy's property. I'll, t- I'll tax him on That'll fix everything. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't work. So, it's unfortunate, but whatever yeah, they're doing, it don't work. Well, what has happened is is essentially because rent control has made, you know, rent control and, and Airbnb and all these kind of regulations that you've had have given these, these large corporations with lots of money the mm-hmm. ability. So, we're just going to buy a building. And we, you know, we'll just buy a building. We'll furnish it with, with furniture. And we'll just let it sit empty for nine months. It's cheaper than, to do that than to... A, than to Accommodate all your regulations, so we're just going to buy a building. I mean, how expensive does it have to actually be to bring in an executive, you know, to, to and have to buy it for the buying the building to sit empty for nine months is cheaper. I mean, how expensive is short-term housing mm. and all this other stuff in, in the area where that is actually the cheaper option? And and how have they driven up that cost? And we never look at the at, at the underlying issues about how do we actually drive up these costs? What are the real reasons that all these costs have been driven up? You know, why are these corporations buying these kind of condos? They don't actually ask, really ask why. What have we done to cause this situation? Well, property taxes are out of control. They go up every year. Mm-hmm. No reason. Mm-hmm. You've got, but yeah, property, property taxes, taxes got, every single tax, yeah. regulations, regulations, it costs. Yeah. And what is it, here in Sacramento, and ours are, are, are kind of small, it's like $15,000 per house just to get, just for the permit. Really? Wow. Ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars, and they were going to lower it in some areas so they can encourage more housing to be built, which is backwards. If you, you know, if you're admitting that it's too high, why don't you just lower it everywhere? You know, mm-hmm. if you if the whole idea is to build housing, you should be encouraging these small and mid-range developers to be building rather than waiting for these big, huge developers to be build these big, huge developments. We should be encouraging small and mid mid developers. You know, the way it was done in the '40s and '50s when right. we, last time we needed a bunch of houses built. You know, it was the small and mid housing right. builders it's that too expensive for them. No. Right. Yeah, because you can't you can't take the two three years to build a small development mm-hmm. and pay the fifteen thousand dollars per per lot in, in fees and all this various other other right. issues that that have come up on housing restrictions and takes years to get any approval right, and then you've approval, and yeah. then you've got to accommodate you know everybody and their son wants some kind of accommodation or, or some kind of kickback <laughs> everybody's got their hand out right yep. yeah their knees are cut yep. knees are peace and then we complain that housing is too expensive and that we have homeless people yeah well I, and I, I appreciate that James because you you're going back to the root cause what's the root cause you know where did it start and that's what we need to look at where's the start well, and in my neighborhood, I live just down the street, and it's kind of the edge of the ghetto. Um, they tried to rebrand it, call it North Oak Park now, but it's still Oak Park. But we've got a serious homeless problem. They're going to build a homeless shelter right down the street, kind of under the freeway at some state on land. And it's actually a good spot. I'm not complaining about building the homeless shelter there, but they've actually caused a lot of the problems. They, they closed a lot of the low-end housing, the, the low-end motels and those kind of things that people who were kind of transitioning, who were barely not homeless. Right. used to live there and so they closed all those all those places down and where are they going to go they couldn't afford a regular housing mm-hmm. they obviously wouldn't have been living in those and so now they had no place to go but the street and so now you've got a bunch of people living in cars and living so and living in tents essentially tent encampments underneath the freeways right. on sidewalks and the other day i was driving home and there was a bonfire people live at a bonfire under the freeway they're cold <laughs> Yeah, and you, you can't blame the people sitting right. there. You're, you're going, this is just an abject failure of decades of policy. Right. And, right. and we don't want to look at the root cause. We want, to, we want solutions. We want temporary solutions without looking at the root cause. And you have to do both. Okay. You're never going to solve this problem without you do both. So, well, let's finish Halloween on a bit of a happy note. John Oliver pays off medical dents for 9,000 debtors. 
He bought $15 million worth of medical debt for 60 grand and then forgave it. Good for John Oliver. I mean, it makes me like the guy a little bit. You know? Uh, I, I don't know I, about I, that. I mean, well, a little bit. <laughs> well, but I mean, if that's what he wants to do as a free citizen, good for yeah, him. That's well, that. we can solve a lot of... We can solve a lot of problems that way, right? Is that the free market is, hey, look, there's a lot of, there's a lot of suffering people who are suffering under debt. We have rich people who have some money who are willing to spend 60 grand to set up a company so he can buy a $15 million worth of medical debt and write it off and improve the lives of 9,000 of 9, people. I mean, that was is, very generous. Is that, is that not a win for voluntarism, for essentially the oh, libertarian out outlook where we look out for each other? Definitely. Absolutely. I congratulate him on doing that. Yes. Thank him for doing it, stepping up. Yes, so I mean, yeah. he's setting examples. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will go amongst all of his friends. And they'll be like, "Hey." Yeah, you know, you don't have to ask. The, you know, you don't have to ask the government for all solutions. Maybe you know we can actually solve some of these problems ourselves. There is a market-based solution that those of us who are concerned about medical debt can pool our resources. You know, donate it to somebody who's willing to buy medical debt and forgive it. You know, there, there's there's other solutions other than you know we must raise taxes and create big government solutions, big government programs, you know, we can do these things. There are actually market-based solutions to these problems. I mean, I think that's, if anything, is that's what he's proven. There are market-based solutions to these problems. Someone with money can, you know, be it LeBron James or John Oliver or any of these people who express Oprah. themselves, Oprah, mm -hmm. you know, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. They have a couple, they have 10, 15 grand they can put aside to, you know, yeah. Why not? They get you know people donate yeah. to them all the time. If they can, schools, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So there are solutions to these type of problems, and you can the same way with you could actually do the same thing with student debt. Could you not? Could could do that, and that's why I don't. I hear people hating the rich. I don't hate the rich. If the rich are making money and then they're donating and helping out their neighborhoods or society, good, good for them. Let them do that. So again, good for John Oliver. Yeah. I really don't know the yeah. guy. I don't know much about him at all, but uh, <laughs> sounds pretty decent doing that. All right. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, anytime for me, anytime someone does something good to make the world a better place, for me, is is about is you know whether your politics aside, honorable people can have honorable political disagreements. You know, if you're a good human being and want to make the world a better place, you know, I'm I'm your friend. Yeah. No, that was a great mention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your friend, and so we've got there's about. 30 seconds, 45 seconds left here we've got, so we're going to say goodbye. Um, thank you for watching. We appreciate being here um, from Jason, Tanya, and myself. Thank you. Thank you. And please remember, love everybody. Happy Halloween. Yeah.